How's it going? Welcome to another All About RVs. I'm Jared Gillis. Today we're going to be talking about RV fires. So uh, the last week and a half I've seen in the news twice just in this local area that uh, two RVs have have burnt down and they were a, a complete loss. So got me thinking like how often does this happen? How susceptible are RVs to, to fire? And I thought that would be great information because if you can know how they typically get started, what can you do to prevent that so that you don't become one of these numbers in the statistics? So for this video, we're gonna put it into two categories. One is going to be uh, while you're driving, what you can do to stop those fires from happening, and when it's parked, what are those things you can do to stop those fires from happening, or at least minimize both of those when you're driving and when you're parked. Now let's start with the engine. There's a lot of combustible things there. So uh, you either have gasoline or you have you have diesel or there's maybe hydraulic fluid for your, your leveling jacks or your slide to be able to move in and out. And so there's some potential for those things to uh, ignite if they're leaking. And then you also have ignition sources in there. So you have a lot of heat built up in the engine, you have catalytic converters, just a lot of the exhaust components in the vehicles putting out an enormous amount of heat. Uh, you also have electrical that can spark and create a fire if some of those fluids are leaking. Um, so there's potential for fire to happen in and amongst a lot of those things there. Now, all that sounds terrible, but what can we do to help minimize and avoid the risk of fire in this area? So number one, let's talk about recalls. There was a recall, I think in just the last couple of months on a specific RV, I can't remember what it was, uh, but there was an issue with a hydraulic line that was chafing on a lot of these RVs and uh, it created a hydraulic leak and then a spark uh, created fires in these RVs. So they have a recall. So you go in, you get it fixed, and you minimize some of those things just by the recalls and the de defective areas they find in these RVs. So check recalls for your RV. It's a great thing to, to check, to be up to date on those. Um, number two is somewhat passive yet active. Uh, every time we stop for fuel, uh, when we fill up our truck with diesel, I'm looking underneath our truck to see if there's any fluids dripping, leaking, anything other than AC condensation dripping underneath the truck. So I want to avoid any of those fluids that can potentially be uh, combustible if they're leaking. So uh, keep an eye on those things and you can always check that every time you stop for fuel or just any stop. It's just a, a quick glance underneath and you could even step, take it a step further if you wanted to. Um, I don't usually pop the hood on the truck at, at gas stops or uh, fueling up for diesel, um, but you can pop the hood, take a visual inspection underneath there, see if anything looks askew or abnormal. And I'm, I'm one that I love to clean the top of the engine every time I change the oil. Um, I wipe it down. I try and keep everything as clean and nice and tidy as I can. So that way uh, I'm giving a visual inspection to, um, this is a, another preemptive thing, is to look at the wires as I'm wiping down the top of the engine. See if there's any chafing or anything that might uh, create a spark or some kind of a fault or um, some kind of ignition source. So it's just things that I like to check out. I kind of look over the hoses as I wipe things down. So um, one of the big preventative things you can do is just give your vehicle a good visual inspection. It's not that you have to be an expert at everything that's underneath the hood, but if you get used to how things look in there when things are functioning properly, and then you see something out of place, it's going to be easier to try and diagnose it and stop whatever potential problem could be there um, before you have a, a fire or any other kind of breakdown. So let's say you wanna take it a step beyond that. You're giving your, your vehicle a visual inspection when everything's good. You're, you're checking things when you're fueling up, um, but you wanna take it a step beyond that to suppress any fire that could happen in that engine bay. And I know there's people that have diesel pushers uh, with the diesel engine in the, the rear of the vehicle, they'll actually put a fire suppression system in there. And this is a pretty slick unit because uh, you'll have like a reservoir back there that's holding the fire retardant foam that's in there. And then you could put a head, a single head or a dual head. Um, it releases the foam and it stops any fire before uh, it destroys your RV and everything in it and potentially being a, a safety risk for you. Now, the other major cause of fires when you're rolling down the road um, is potentially coming from the, the tires, the bearings, uh, they say that axle 
area. So uh, you want to make sure that your your bearings are greased. Um, if those go dry, they say they can overheat. If you're dragging a brake, you don't want that resistance just constantly on building up heat back there. But the biggest one out of those is going to be your tires, especially if you have uh, like a, a dual tire in the rear, uh, dualies, something like that. It's hard to check that inner that inner tire on your rig to see if it's flat when you stop for fuel. Uh, but if that tire goes low on pressure and it's building up a lot of heat as you're going, it, it could catch on fire. There have been RVs reported catching on fire from having that, that low tire back there. So they said this is most common on um, the, the Class A's with two wheels in the back, maybe a Class C with dualies in the back. Uh, maybe it's even you're, you're pulling a fifth wheel and you have a truck that has dualies and you need to check that. So uh, the best way to avoid this is to take care of your tires. We have a whole video on that. Uh, take care of your tires and um, tire pressure monitor. Know that your tires are staying fully inflated as you're driving, having you, it alert you if your tire pressure uh, starts dropping. Um, those are things that you can do to avoid any fire starting ar around your tire. Now let's talk about avoiding the fires when your RV is stationary, when it's parked. So uh, let's start with that 12 volt system, your electrical system. Again, any wires that are chafing, uh, give it a good visual inspection. Look for those wires to see if you have anything that's rubbing against the outer layer, the, the sheathing of that cable. Uh, you don't want to create a spark, create an arc that could be the ignition to the fire that you're trying to avoid. Now that brings us to the, the second leading cause for RV fires, which is a big one, uh, which is RV fridges. So uh, those dual energy source fridges where they can, they can run on AC, they can run on propane, have had a lot of issues. The good thing is there's been a lot of recalls on those fridges so that you can get them fixed. So uh, Norcol, Dometic, I know that there was a recall on our Dometic uh, fridge and it was fixed a, a long time ago, even before we got this rig. So um, they're, they're pretty serious about that recall. They say if your uh, fridge hasn't been serviced on that recall, if it fits within th that model and those date ranges to, to turn it off, do not use it, do not turn on the propane to the fridge uh, because it can be a big fire hazard. It's not worth losing your RV over that. Just a quick side note on the back side of the fridge, you can pull this panel off and you can, if you haven't used your RV for a while, see if anything tried to build a nest or anything that's gonna block that airflow from being able to allow this fridge to operate properly. Also, the fridge is usually why people run their propane when they're uh, driving their RV down the road. We just recommend turning the propane off when you're driving. There's also a device called the, the Fridge Defend that will basically power everything down if the conditions become at, at dangerous levels. If those conditions happen, it'll just shut it all down. Uh, so there is a device that does that also. Now, one fire hazard that's kind of on the list is one that uh, RV users typically can almost create. So if you're using, uh, say, a space heater when you go to a place that's cold and uh, you're already paying for power at the RV park, so you plug this in to save on a little bit of propane, um, these things can be dangerous if not used properly. I mean, these, these even plague houses with lots of fires. So uh, like this one, if it tips over, it's just gonna shut off. So get one that has some safety features built into it. Don't use an extension cord on something like this. I mean, usually in an RV, RVs are small. You don't need an extension cord to get to the other side of the house. Um, so uh, don't use an extension cord. I've seen people and heard of people melting extension cords, putting those under mats. Don't put the cords under mats. Uh, don't overload those circuits. It's easy to overload a circuit when you're using something like this. So usually if I'm using a space heater, it's kind of the only thing happening on that circuit for me. So um, it's just easier and safer. Now, if you're anything like me, you want to avoid that fire. You never want to have a fire in your RV. I mean, that would just, it would just be terrible, but it's worth talking about and worth thinking about and, and seeing what you have uh, to be able to put a fire out when you do have one. So uh, these are just these tiny little guys that we have just handy all around the RV. We have a few of them. We have a bigger fire extinguisher down below, uh, but we just wanna be prepared to be able to put out that fire immediately. We might even get, I saw that they have these 
uh, fire retardant balls where uh, it's like a miniature basketball. You throw it at the flames if there is a fire and it basically erupts in a flame retardant kind of a chemical and just puts the flame out. <laughs> that, that would be pretty fun to have on hand. Uh, they also have one that like you cut a hole, it looks like a smoke detector in the ceiling and if flames hit it, it just automatically uh, drops out that flame retardant chemical and uh, snuffs out any flame within like a 16 foot radius or something like that. So there's a lot of neat things out there that you can use to automatically shut down the fire. But as you're checking your fire extinguisher, check like these have a date code on them. They don't have like a pressure gauge or anything. Uh, but on the other one, we have a pressure gauge. So you wanna check that, make sure that everything's functioning properly on those and replace it if you need to, so that when you go to grab it, it's just going to work. So the last thing to talk about in that is to make sure that you're able to get out. Uh, the doors, the exits are gonna be fairly obvious, but there's usually going to be a window that you can just pop it out, pull the screen and be able to get out of your RV for safety. Safety first, get safe, get out, and uh, uh, don't get hurt. Well, those are the things that I learned and picked up as I was researching RV fires. I hope I never have one. I hope you guys never have one. Um, so stay safe out there. I didn't want this to create fear in a bunch of people. I mean, there's auto fires, there's home fires. Of course, there's going to be RV fires, but it, it's not like they're just sitting there just waiting to combust. Uh, but there are things that we can do to minimize that risk. So I wanted to put this out there so that we we can all minimize our risk and just avoid those fires. So remember, don't get paranoid about this stuff. Remember to get out there, to keep having fun, keep exploring. And so if we don't see you on the road, hopefully we'll see you in the next video. Oh, one last thing that if you had any advice or tips, just leave those down in the comments. I'd love to hear what you guys have to say.